though, we got Dose of Dion, one of our contributors here at Woodward Sport. He does a, a great YouTube, um, just everything he does is great. All on his YouTube. live stream shows, his takes, everything that he does, all supporting the Lions. So he was at our NFL draft party, and let's see what Dose of Dion has to think about uh, Brockers and saying that, hey, we could turn this around year one. Dion, welcome to the show, man. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Yes. At least tell me this is working. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, good. Excuse me. I've had some issues with that. I'm glad we're good this time. Hey, thanks for having me. Guys. Thanks for having me on. I love. It. I hear some optimism, man. I, I feel like I've heard a lot of people sitting with the uh, five wins and stuff, but I got some eights in here this morning. That feels good. I'm always on that train, you know. I always got some optimism. Uh, but I I saw that last night, the whole Michael Brockers thing, and I was like, okay, the players are talking about this. I was like, when have the players talked about like this in the past? You know, saying things like this. I mean, I've always said things like that. Oh, yeah, they could turn it around. But seeing Brockers, I think we see multiple players like, hey, this thing could turn around pretty quickly. Tyrell not looking at this like a rebuild. You know, of course, they don't, they don't want to look like as a rebuild because, you know, they're trying to earn a deal. But, no, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm kind of in the range of 7 to 10 right now. Uh, that's kind of where my wins are. I don't know my exact win total right now. I'll probably do that closer to the season. But that's that's kind of what I'm feeling. I love it, man. See, good. Another person that's optimistic with me on all of this. <laughs> That's what I like to hear, you know, because Corey's talking about the fan base, how they would turn on Campbell after this year if we put this much pressure on him and he doesn't succeed. Um, what do you feel about Dan Campbell and what he's brought to the table so far? My, my favorite part of what Dan Campbell has brought, and, you know, I haven't been at the practice and stuff. My favorite part, though, is the coaching staff he's put together. I, I'm just I'm loving everything that the coaching staff is doing. I love the approach that they came in with of we're not coming in here to replace everybody you know start to start the rebuild now this is how we want to do it we need our guys they came in i think open-minded who's here so we have to work with you know and then we're going to try to put you in the best spots i feel like they did it defensively and they're, they're doing it offensively as well and that's that's my favorite part of what the, the dan campbell has done see i was never big on the train that we needed a coordinator we needed a dc as our coach you know we've had that i just wanted a guy that could come in and had experience we have that now but also a guy that's put together this staff because, you know, their job, you know, do your thing. You, you run your offense. You take control of the defense. He's got to manage everything. And that's that's my favorite part is he came in. He didn't hire buddies. He had guys that are proven that have done their, you know, done their thing. And then you get the guys like Dom Capers who are helping out, John Dorsey in the front office. That's been my favorite part. Yeah, and it's not like the in the past how we have a Patriots way. It's more so a Dan Campbell right. way. And that's what I love most about it. He came in, he did his thing, and he made changes that he needed to. What part of the organization are you looking forward to seeing most this year? Like, is it uh, the, the defense? Is it the offensive lineman? What part do you focus on this season? Man, I'm excited for all of it, man. <laughs> really <laughs> uh, that, dude, I don't even know. Like, I almost want to just say, I mean, I want to see what the Trey Flowers, Romeo, and that defensive line can do. Because the more I look at it, I know I've seen Todd Walsh use his guys like that in the past. So I'm like, okay, I can see how this works. I can see what he's looking for. And if we can stop that run, you know, we, we got the big guys on there. I know Brockers can stop the run. I'm excited to see if we can muster up some pass rush. When you have all the guys that can do it, you have the guy that put together Saxville. You have the guy in Dom Capers, you know, who, you know, put together the whole zone blitz. So I'm excited for that aspect. And then probably the receivers as well. I feel like it gets it, – it's getting some tape, understandably. But I, I would like to see him go out and, and surprise some people. And, of course, you have to say Jared Goff because, uh, you know, that's our guy. Now. I just want to see what Jared Goff can do this season. You really, what, do you, what do you really think about this receiving core? Let's be real. <laughs> what do you really think hey. about this? Re do you, do you, like, cause, I mean, Quintez Cephas, yeah. he had promise last year. Tyrell Williams, we're, we're banking on Tyrell Williams to have perfect cover. We're, we're banking on <laughs> Sean Sean Ma we're banking on Amon Ross St. Brown to be a stand Break down. <laughs> we're, breaking, we're banking on Brashad Perryman to be Brett Perryman. Where, where, where do you, where's your optimism coming from with this wide receiving core? Man, you, you hit it. You hit it. The, the most important thing is staying healthy. That's that's 100%. If, they're, if I knew they were healthy the whole season, I would have a lot more confidence. That's my biggest concern because everybody's been dealing with injuries. Everybody we've brought in seems to be have injuries in their past. But I would say if healthy, what I like about it is I just like the positions I, I, I think that they're going to fill in. I think it's similar to what you saw the Chargers build when you talk about the types of receivers that we had when Anthony Lynn was there, when he had brought in Mike Williams. And then he put Tyrell in the slot. And he ate from the slot, you know, and then they obviously had their Keenan Allen. And then I also have a feel a little bit of a mix from the Rams, you know, because when Cooper Cup stepped in year one, 
all of a sudden he became the top guy for golf, right? I mean, it was his rookie season, third round pick. I, I have a lot of confidence in St. Brown before the draft. I thought he'd be much higher than a fourth round pick. So that's right. We, we got to expect. I mean, they got to stay healthy. It is a little optimism. I'm not saying they're going to be a top unit. But I definitely don't put him at the bottom because I've seen the way they Anthony Lynn has utilized these guys. You know how successful a guy like Tyrell Williams has been. He's been a number one. He showed us he could be a number one, and he balled out. And then when he got pushed to the slot, he balled out there. Rashad Perriman's very interesting one, but I even think recently he's been a lot better. Now the Jets wasn't great, but you know he was on the Jets. It was like okay, Joe Flacco again. What are we doing here? I think Rashad Perriman's been much better than what you know kind of the label was put on him since the beginning of his career with the Ravens where he dropped everything. You know, he hasn't – he's had better hands since then. So I got a little more optimistic. I'm not saying they're in the top half, but uh, I don't put them at 31. Here's, I, here's my point. Listen, our offensive line could potentially be a top five offensive line in the NFL this year. What do you need to get your wide receivers open? Time and if the quarterback has time, it doesn't matter how long the, the wide receiver or how good the wide receivers are. NFL wide receivers have the ability to separate if they're getting five, six seconds, and we haven't had this luxury in the past. And to me, that's one major change that's happening this year that we haven't seen to where we can rely on. Oh my God! Not only are we going to pound the ball at people with a huge line and potential top five, like I said, our quarterback's going to have time to go through his progressions, then we could run play action. As you know, Goff is like the number one play action quarterback of the past two years. So when he's protected, Goff performs at a very, very, very high level. And, you know, the wide receiver core, we've seen it with Tom Brady. It, it really doesn't matter if the scheme is right, if you're throwing out any wide receiver and the quarterback has time and is accurate. We, that, to me, that's the biggest change in this year from last year, and that's the thing that's going to put us over the top. I'm with you on the defense, though. I'm interested to see how the 4-3 to the 3-4 is going to change our approach because I like pulling uh, like Flowers off the line and have him standing up and his ability to attack from anywhere because that was our problem last year we had four down linemen but we only sent four every single play and you knew where they were coming from this year you are, you're not gonna know it's gonna be a guessing game we're gonna punch you in the mouth yeah absolutely look you man you make me excited over here See, that's I don't know my job to close this <laughs> no i'm with you i'm with you i mean the offensive line i mean and then you have the depth you have crosby if something happens and you know what he's gonna give you and it honestly just ties me right back to the whole coaching staff thing and I think Anthony went working with Jared Goff. You know, they're installing this offense around what Jared Goff does well, not necessarily just putting a scheme here and saying, Goff, you're going to fit into this, and we'll see if it works tonight. If it doesn't, we'll move it on. So I like that, you know, the way that they're building it. But I also like the coaching staff with the running backs because, you know, the run game does open the pass, and we've had a lot of names. We've had offensive linemen come through. We've had running backs come through, and uh, we haven't had great success drafting running backs. I like what we added, but not only did we add talent in the running game, we also brought in this guy in Anthony Lynn who's – proven I can build a running game. You know, Deuce Staley, who's been working in Philadelphia for a long time, surviving regime changes and getting a lot out of his running backs. He's done great things. When guys goes down, he, you know, guys step up. So that that's why it's my favorite part is his staff. And you're right. If you have all day, man, if that offensive line plays well, same thing with the defense to defensive line, everything that comes off of it. So you can surprise a lot of people. So the season just a couple weeks away from starting. I can't believe that's finally here. <laughs> that is wild. Are man. we making any upgrades to the wall behind you during the show? During your show? <laughs> yeah, do we gotta send you a golf jersey, man. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, we gotta make some upgrades, man. I, I you know, I, I for some reason I haven't got it yet. I just have like some weird feeling someone will change the number. I know it won't happen, but I gotta make some upgrades. I got the Jamar, you know, we're rocking the Jefferson today. But the background does need some upgrading. We got Spielman. I guess that kind of counts. You know, he's that, here. He's helping. That Spielman's but, uh, sick, man. It is. got to hide that number nine. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's not even mine, actually. It's, it's my uncle's. You brought it over. Yeah, the number nine, you know. <laughs> I mean, until the season starts. And then we got the gamble <laughs> over here. But... <laughs> No, I'm, we need I'm, to make some upgrades. Though. I'm, I'm going to sit in on the golf jersey. We, we got to hide that. If we're going to have this, all this optimism and drink this Kool Aid, we got to hide that. We got to hide Stat Pafford and give you golf and, you know, have that up there for the, for the right juju. Oh, yeah. It, it'll change. It'll change by the seasons rolling around. We'll get something else up there. Question What are your thoughts about this, um, this, the, the, the defensive line? I mean, I think there are some questions. There's some question marks there as well about what are they going to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest question for me is probably that you're going to be asking a lot of young guys to step up. And we know that defensive line, like offensive line, can take time to develop. You know, that's why it was like, all right, it's good we keep Crosby because Sewell, it could take a little bit of time. 
But then it brings me back to Todd Walsh. And I'm, I'm very – I like what Todd Walsh has done in the past working with defense linemen from, you know, Seattle, Tampa, and then getting with Jacksonville and kind of working that together. I do like the idea of pushing, you know, Trey and Romeo to outside linebackers on base sets because I think it gives us a lot more size and the focus is stop the run. we got to be able to stop the run. Last season we were doing this with those guys – on the line so it was like we lacked a lot of size last season so i like the mix that it gives you it gives you ability to you know bring at different guys and i think obviously in passing downs you're just getting after it anyways right you're just putting those guys back on the defensive line so the biggest thing for me is you know can those rookies play a good role i know penicini's here which is nice for no tackle so i know we have that but uh you know if you're asking a guy like levi to start he's he's sort of raw a little bit he didn't play that much in college so i'm excited for the change of moving them back on base sets because I think we've seen, you know, seen it work. But uh, at the same time, it's going to be asking a lot of the rookies. That's my biggest concern. And that's my biggest thing right there is we're asking a lot of people to step up. It's going to be asking for basically for them to have eight to nine wins or even more. It has to be the perfect storm. Everything has to click right. One cog in that system goes wrong. You're back at, at six to seven, five to six. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a good point. I said, I mean, it's the perfect, that would be the perfect storm. Well, you know, I mean, the good thing is is that we, we got we got some reliable depth, I feel like, behind it. You know, we, we do have hand if he's healthy. I'm not saying he's reliable in terms of health if he's healthy. And you got, you know, your Nick Williams. But you're right. I mean, the rookies, they do have to step up. Guys are kind of going to be forced to step up this year and see what they can do. So I think you're right. But, man, I think the perfect storm is more than nine wins. I think, like, if everything goes right, I think we're, we're pushing double digits at that point. So Let's go I'll playoffs, be, baby! Man. Playoffs, <laughs> baby! <laughs> if they all fall out, man, man, we're talking playoffs, talking playoff wins. Like, come on, man. Talking playoffs! Playoffs! Oh, man. Well, Dosa Dion, thank you for coming on with us this morning. I love your energy. I love your passion for the Lions, obviously. You and, and I share the same optimism. Detroit. That's what I love about him. He's our adopted son, he man. Is. He is the only thing good that's ever come out of Ohio. Dose of Dion right oh, here man. on the Woodward Sports Network. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Dion. We appreciate you But saying that. He's got a Chris Spielman behind him, and Charles Woodson came out of Ohio. But, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, but thank you for coming yeah. out with us, Dion, and thank you for all your YouTube videos. They're great, man, and I love watching them. And keep doing what you do, and I can't wait for football season, man. we got to get to a game. Oh, man, I'm pumped. Full capacity? Come on, man. It can't be saying that. It can't be saying that now. I'll be buying tickets already. Appreciate you guys having me on, man. It's awesome coming on. All right. We'll talk to you soon.